Hi, it's Krista here. Okay, so um, I just got this last video uploaded and I did it. It's called uh, Persecuted, question mark, question mark, get inspired. So it took me a day and a half to get that uploaded because I had to go to a public place to do it. Um, that, it just, this video is kind of a continuance to that, but it's, I want everybody to understand that are going through what I'm going through, the targeted individuals, persecuted, whatever you want to call them, understand that it ebbs and it flows and you have a day where you feel like you triumph over everything and then you'll have a day where the war wages so harshly against you because you had that day that was good, right? And they saw that. They saw, you know, they, they were moved out of the way. And, and they're not, and, and you're not knocked down, so they're mad, right? It, it's like a, dealing with the devil is like dealing with a spoiled little brat who got everything they ever wanted, never got a spanking, never got disciplined. And so if you don't give them what they want and they can't, you know, then they can get what they want, they throw an epic fit. Only it's not just that one kid, it's that one kid times everyone or within a 50 mile radius of you comes to go and throw the fit, right? So I really, you know, I thought I need to do this video because I want people to understand that saw that video that, you know, every day is going to be different. But even though we have that rough day, right? And that next, you know, every, every day is going to come with its different trials and its different tribulations. And they're going to be in a completely different way than anybody else really experience it right now, experiences them right now. Um, it used to kind of be, we were all in this together and that's not that way anymore. Now there are, there, there's two armies. You got your Satan's army or you're in God's army. One of the two battle lines have been drawn, right? So I wanted to bring some more encouragement based on the fact that I had one of those rough days today, but not really because again, you know, am I persecuted? Yeah, but kind of not because I look at it in a different way. It's flipping the perspective and looking at it as, okay, so like I, I, you know, I can't, I, I'm, I don't, I can't have a job because they won't hire me. Nobody will hire me. Nobody will even open my resume. And if I walk in someplace, I mean, they just <sighs> hiss me out. <laughs> So, you know, and it's not because I don't have a great resume. It's not because I'm not awesome. It's not because of any of those things. So I could look at it as the enemy won't let me work, right? No. After being at Walmart for longer than I ever am, for maybe, I was there maybe there an hour. It reminds me of God's will. It reminds me of that he doesn't allow me to have a job. God doesn't allow me to have a job. It's not Satan. He thinks he's winning on that one. He's not. God's in control always. Again, he always he ha, he is the head of all principalities and powers. And we have to remember that in those rough days, like I kind of had today, where I'm just trying to go and get some groceries, bro. You know, and I have got this multitude of people around me mad. You know, and everybody's got to know what I'm doing, what I'm getting, and you know, push their carts up against each other in front of me so I can't go forward. Like the craziest things after they launched a huge attack against my house last night, literally there was a spotlight on my house and about 10 people outside. And all of a sudden I hear, I mean, there's demons crawling up the outside of my house. I'm on the second floor and they're knocking on the window. You know, they're scratching. You hear, I mean, I, you hear them. Now, was that, do I know all the intents of that attack other than maybe just to scare me? It didn't scare me. And that also goes back to the other thing I'm going to say is always keeping your peace. Don't ever let the enemy rob you of your peace because you always have to remember who has the authority here. God has the authority. And if you are ordained by God or you are here, you are a believer in Christ, you are his. So you have the authority over them. And all I did was rebuke them. I didn't stop what I was doing. I didn't change it. I just was reading my Bible, just having some study time, you know. Um, and I rebuked and I, and I broke down, you know, I pulled down strongholds and imaginations. And I was speaking his word. And I was breaking spells and curses because I was pretty sure those were being thrown at the house. And the only thing that I did experience was I started to feel a lot of sadness. I started to think about the tragedies. I started to think about the, the things that have happened yesterday and the day before and the year before and 
just the things that he wants me to not be able to survive. And I have, and I will, I will continue. And I knew immediately that is not of God. These, if, if there are demons being launched at my house right now, pretty sure these emotions aren't mine because I'm pretty sure that I have joy no matter what, right? Um, so I just rebuked that. Lord, these are not my feelings. I even renounced them. I renounce these feelings of guilt. I renounce these feelings of sadness, Lord, because I know it would not happen if it wasn't your will. So I want to read a couple of things. So, um, and this just, this is a message to the believers, to the saints, to the people that are going through the things that I'm going through, um, to understand why you're going through it even more so. John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit whatsoever you should ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. So we didn't choose him. He chose us. Okay, and so then John 17, 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are yours. Jesus prays for you. You know that? Jesus prays for you. He prays for his chosen people. Because he knows, John 17, 11, now I am no more in the world and come to you, Holy Father, keep them through your own name, those whom you have given me, that they may be as one as we are one. Uh, John 17, 14, I have given them your word, and your world, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, as I am not of the world. We're not of the world. We come from him, by him, postmarked, signed, sealed, and delivered. Okay? <laughs> like, we're not of the world, so the world hates us. He gave us his word, and if we spread it, they hate us. They don't hate us based on any work that we have done other than the good works. We're out there doing evil. No, they're just like, yeah, woo, jump on that bandwagon. It's because we're doing good. It's because we're chosen, and some of us have the seal of God in our forehead. Some of us don't. They know that. They know who you are. You know, it's funny because I... I I have two people that have actually witnessed the barragement of the enemy on me. And they haven't even witnessed it to the fullest degree. So if you want to say, oh, she's paranoid. No, she's not because I got witnesses. But it's funny because it only the vicious, 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 crazy multitude attacks only happen outrightly when I'm by myself. And it's funny because I've actually tried to record it before and I look like a lunatic. Because on video, it just looks like there's just a bunch of people around you. He doesn't pick up what they're actually doing to you. And that that whole multitude of people, all those cars, they're there for you. But it doesn't look that way. It's funny because you can't get a restraining order on the devil and all the people he inhibits. <laughs> but if you could, it'd be great. But it's like there's no way to prove these things. But I do have two people that have witnessed some serious craziness that has happened um, and you know, the, the stalking and, and the embar the, the bombardment into the home by fake police and then several other attempts, you know, if they can't get me out of the house and they send the cops, only sometimes they're not actually cops. Like just people dressed in black with fake niner niners. It's crazy. Um, you know, but there's no way in this world to get any kind of help. You can't call and say, Hey, I'm being, I'm being harassed. Is there going to be, oh, your name is Chris Hines? Oh, oh, yeah, no, no. I'll be there, right? I'll be right there. We'll come and take a report. And I'd probably be taken away. You know what I mean? Like, there is no justice. But Jesus justifies us. And through justifying us, he glorified us to the Father. Next one. So, uh, John 17, 15. I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. The Lord has got us. So even days when you just want to go to Walmart and get some groceries and they are tripping out because why is she buying groceries? Why does she have any money? What? You know, and they're, they're mad. I mean, I went to go get gas. Now everybody's, every one of them is full on the side that my gas tank is. Do you think that's, that's coincidence? No, but do they forget that I'm a race car driver and I'm not a gangster park like a like like nobody's business? No, whip it back in there, you know. I'll go backwards. That's cool. No, nobody's bothering me. It's always being able to not be in the emotion of that moment. Who cares what they're trying to do? You know, 
I always was in my normal life prior to all this. I loved my freedom. I remember my sister always thought I was crazy because she'd call me and she'd be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, oh, I'm just having lunch. Oh, with who? All by myself. Isn't that embarrassing? No, it's great. I'm wonderful company. I always enjoy just being able to go to like, a, I'd go on drives and go out in the middle of nowhere and just wander, you know, or go to this huge mall and just wander about by myself. I love being able to invisibly move through life when I wasn't, when I didn't have to be on, you know, when I didn't have to be at work and be, cause every, if I was going to be there, I was going to be in it 110%, right? So I, it took a lot of energy. So when I wasn't, I wanted to just really, I just, I loved the invisibility of it all. They know that that's something they took from me. And, but you know what? I give it. It's just like when Jesus died on the cross and they're like, we're taking your life. He's like, no, I'm giving it to you. It's flipping the perspective. When you think the enemy is stopping you from having something or from doing something, no, it's his will that it not be done, right? Continue to pray about it. If it's an issue, pray about it. Never cease in prayer. Always. He knows what's going on, but you have to pray for it. And what I've learned is always saying that. I'm praying for this. If it's your will, let that be done, please. You know what I mean? And then, um, so John 17, 17, sanctify them through truth. Thy word is truth. God has sanctified us, which means he sets you apart. So not only are we not of this world, are we not a part of this? We're here on a divine mission, but God sanctified us. So set us apart even more. So this barragement, this harassment, this targeting, all these attacks on your life, your home, you know, you, you don't make a move. I live right off the lake. And I mean, they send, everybody comes through this little cove and just does a little circle. It is November in the Midwest. And there are still poor little duckies out there right in front of my house every day in the water. They aren't anywhere else in the lake because they should have gone south. It's just stuff like that. It's like the, the you know, and then they're all in the neighbor. Every, I mean, they know it's like having the busybody neighbor on top of the spoiled little brat never leaving you alone. However, keeping your peace that the Lord has put in your heart, keeping your eye on things above, not what's happening here on the earth. Don't worry about what's going to happen. You're going to be fine. If you're in my position right now, you know that nothing really happens easy anymore. And before you do make a move, you pray about it thoroughly. You don't ever leave anything that you are not prepared to never return to. You don't, you know, you keep certain things on you. You, you, you think everything out. You don't drive at night. You don't leave the house at night. You don't do things like that because you can't see what's coming at you in the dark because if you're of the light you stay in the light so it's just like you know and continue to be vigilant keep your eyes open stay sober minded be you know because you gotta they try so hard for for this mind control you know i understand completely why the lord does not have me out working in the public because of what i experienced in walmart today just the the just invasion of people and all of their horrible thoughts, their sorceries they're throwing at me, the things that they're doing. How in the world would I survive eight hours, let alone 40 hours a week in that? That would be a test, a huge test. Now, if he put me to it, would I do it? Absolutely. Flying colors. I go home crying every night, but I'd suck it up and go back the next day if that's what the Lord wanted. But he wants me to be able to preserve my anointing, my, you know, my peace to where, because when I go out there, I can't wait to get back into, you know, I got to get back because I mean, I don't have headaches. I still have one right now. Headaches are the devil. That is Satan. Any ailment is the devil. I don't have headaches. That a little attack they launched last night. You know, I woke up this morning with one and I haven't been able to kick it yet. However, I'm standing in faith for healing and I know that that's coming and I've rebuked him a million times and I'm going to continue and it's getting better. But you know, it's just, you have to be able to be aware of when you're being attacked and that it's not just you. It's not just happening with you because everything that we're dealing with is invisible or that invisible thing jumped into somebody who is physical. And honestly, that's the only time that I have any issues just because then they kind of gain, they, they gain, now they have a, a mind and somebody to physically go out and do their bidding. And so it's just a lot of, I like my space. 
I don't get up in your business, don't need you to get up in mine, you know? So I've always had really good boundaries in place where it's like, I've never been like the nosy one. Like I've always been focused on what I gotta do. So it tests a lot of my, but what I do is I just continue. I don't acknowledge anything anybody says because generally it's a spell. And so if you agree with them, you're generally agreeing to something that's gonna hurt you. Um, I've learned little tactics like that. Um, so you just kind of have to really, I always pray for God to make my mind very sharp because they want to distract you. They want to distract you to get you to leave your money or to leave your purse or to set your phone down because you'll never see that again. It's not going to be like back in the day when somebody would turn it in or say, oh, ma'am, you dropped this. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> They're going to be, ha, 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 victory. <laughs> and it's not, you know, so it, it's just, you got to really be aware of all of those tactics and just really stand on the word. Again, he did not bring you here to leave you here. He has sanctified you. You are not a part of the world. And that is why the world hates you because you come bearing witness to the word of God. Um, and then uh, Romans, Romans 8, 27. He that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for, for the saints according to the will of God. The Lord is always making intercession for us. Just like he said, he prayed, he, we, he prays for us. He's always interceding. He's never leaving. And the more he triumphs, the more that spool brat comes out. You, when you have a good day, you kind of know the next day is going to be even more, you know, it's going to probably be kind of rough because the enemy's mad because we're winning because we have the victory, which he knows we ultimately have anyway. But he wants to make you forget that you have the victory, right? He always want to make, make you forget that what you see right here is truth. What you see right here is an illusion. This is the biggest, most epic magic show you will ever attend in your life. And all it is is distraction, because what's what we're doing over here is a real thing. But distraction, look at this, look at all the lights. But this is what we're actually doing over here, from the government to the churches to everything. It's all a magic show to walking down the street. I know for a fact that nothing is coincidence, so pay attention to everything. When you're looking in your rear view, God says, it's, you just have a reason to look at that car, continue to look at that car. And it saved me a million times because all of a sudden I got one headlight going off and on, blinking at me. The other one's on, you know, it's Illuminati symbolism or Satan, whatever it is at this point, but it's everywhere that I go. But a lot of times it's been behind me where I've been like, and that's when I noticed it. Now it, cars will stop, They'll just divide and go on each side of the road and stop there. And I look in my rear view and they're both doing it to me, you know, and then the oncoming and it's crazy. Again, don't drive at night. Um, but now it's weird because everybody's lights stay on during the day so they can still do it. But at night is when it kind of gets dangerous. Um, anyway, so, and then Romans eight thirty eight. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come goes down into 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is through Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from him. you got to keep your eyes on him. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about it. He's going to provide for you. He's going to take care of you. And he's going to protect you from the evil one. God himself chose us. Woo, goosebumps. God himself chose you before you, you were predestined. You know, it's, I've got chills. It's a beautiful thing what we're doing right now. And Satan wants to take our glory just because it's not ideal. It's not what we once knew. Everything's different. Things that we never thought were a threat are an absolute threat. But God gives us all the tools to be the victors. He gives us all the things we need. You just always have to. You can't ever let that loser get in your head and make you think, that you are without, you are lacking, you are losing, you are, you are in danger that, you know, and if you are, get out, you know, just don't put yourself in, don't put your, you know, just be very cautious, but don't let him just scare you because he launches demons at your house and they're scratching. Oh, thank God they're outside. <laughs> just won't open a door or window, you know? Oh, I woke up with a headache. Rebuke you. Get out. You know, I heard him walking all over the house last night. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I command you to leave. Get out. You know, just, and if they don't get it, keep saying it. And then start getting into more scripture. Because you know what? They, what they hate to be around is praise and worship music. So I'll go and turn them up my gospel music. Start reading the Bible. Okay, everybody join around. We're going to have a Bible study. Who's with me? You know, 
you're, if you're not feeding them, again, not sowing iniquity, like I talked about in my last one, if you're not sowing iniquity, if the things they're trying to push on you aren't working, then invite them to a Bible study. <laughs> you know, just, because otherwise, you know, what are you doing here? Why are you in my house? Why are you clawing the walls? Why are you messing with the lights like they are right now? Because they don't want me doing this. I don't care. We don't care. Because this is my mission for God. This is your mission for God by the Almighty Father. He has ordained you and sanctified you to come and do His will. Amen. Woo! All right. Closing thought. Romans 8, 28. We know that all these things work together for good, for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Can I get a witness? So... Just, you know, I wanted to really, you know, I wanted to do kind of a follow-up just because, you know, if you have a good day, you're just on fire. And I did, I had the Holy Spirit just riding through me like crazy. And he, they did it through this video too. Um, you know, but it was like pulling teeth to get that thing uploaded. So, quick little story. Um, so, I ended up going to McDonald's. So, I have to do everything all, you know, very low key. Because if they know what I'm doing, they'll try to stop it. So I'm trying to upload this video. I've been trying and trying and trying. Wouldn't do it. And so I put my headphones on. And I'm just sitting in this back thing. And I and I'm and I uh, I turn on my praise and worship. And then I had YouTube open and I just set my phone down on the seat. So hopefully nobody can make contact with the phone because they start messing with the internet connection. It's so slow. I mean, it was telling me it was nine hours before this video was gonna upload. It was a 15 minute video. You know, and then it went to like 3,000 some odd hours. Crazy stuff that was happening. You know, it's all supernatural. Anyway, and so I'm sitting there and so I've learned sign language and like, I don't know all of it, but like this, like, like, uh, like what a powerful name it is, like the name of Jesus. And so, and I know that song and I love it. Well, it comes on and why? Well, and I've gotten my Bible out and I was, you know, writing down my verses and stuff. I was just doing Bible study because I'm waiting for this video to upload, but I'm trying to like make them not realize that. And I mean, this place is in a hizzy because I've got the Bible out. What? And then this song comes on. So I start doing my sign language, right? And there's a part where it's like, there's an army rising up, right? Uh, <laughs> Holy Spirit. And then it's like, um, there's an army rising up. Oh, and it's like, there's power in the name of Jesus. So they're seeing this. And I'm not looking up at anyone. I still got my head down, but you can see I'm just excited because I love that song. I just feel the spirit move when I feel that song. And I love doing the sign language. I feel like it's, it's just, it's, it's accentuating the words of the song. It's like why I write down scripture. It's because it makes it come to life for me, you know. And oh, they were so mad. I mean, a brigade was there just. And you know what's sad? If we look at it and sad, but it's not. But you know, it's unfortunate that that because I get out my Bible so you can go home and watch your porn right because I get my Bible out and I'm studying quietly by myself that <laughs> that's a problem you know again we could look at it as, a, as unfortunate we could look at it as a lot of things that are negative but let's flip it for our positive because we're in this and God's not left us you know, he's positive for us. He's praying for us. He's always interceding on our behalf. So let's always try to flip it and look for the good of, you know, that's something that needs to be seen, you know, and okay, the enemy gets upset. Good, because that means we're winning. So anyway, uh, but yeah, we know that all things, whether they look negative to you, God's got something else. God's still making a way. It just maybe wasn't in the way that you thought, right? So all these attacks from the enemy, everything they're doing to harm you, he works it for your good, for the ones that love him and are called according to his purpose. Can I get an amen? All right, y'all. Well, I hope that this is helpful and I hope that it's encouraging that even if you have a great day and then you have not so much of a great day, it's not because of you and it's not God doing it to you. It is the enemy throwing a fit because your God never fails and your God is making a way for you. So you just hang on to that. All right, let's end in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you so much for 
everything you're doing in our lives, in my life, in the life of anybody that is watching this video, Lord, and the lives that you are changing through our, through the example of us, Lord. Let our lives be a testimony to what you can do, Heavenly Father. Use us. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to uh, guide us, lead us, keep us, um, can provide your your divine protection on me and everyone that watches this video, Lord. Um, and just let us know what you want us to do, Lord. Just continue to give us visions, give us gifts of the Holy Spirit, give us all the fruits of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Um, and just uh, we praise you, we thank you. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, y'all, have a good one.